The game itself was amazing. It was a great game for Xbox. And soon being bought out by Microsoft, this game would forever be part of the Xbox series. But the name surrounding this amazing game is also a term used in the automotive world to talk about a vehicle that brings people into dealerships even though they can't afford that vehicle. It's something that other than racing can bring to an automotive company. They don't make tons of money and they don't sell in mass quantities, but these vehicles are still required by some of the major automakers out there to try and bring more people through the doors and bring more awareness to their brand. Yeah, we're talking about Halo cars and why these vehicles are so important to the car companies of the world. Oh, it's podcast coming to you anytime, anywhere from around the globe on any major streaming site from Autolux.net. Welcome back to the Autolux podcast. I am your host, as always, the doctor to the automotive industry, Mr. Everett J, talking to you today from our main website, autolux.net. If you haven't been there, stop by, check it out. Go to the corporate website link. Go to the, check out some of the rated vehicles from around the globe and even some of our other podcasts from years past. And today, we'd also like to give a thank out to podbean.com for bringing this podcast to the streaming world and you, our listener, on whatever medium you're listening to us through, whether it be iTunes, Spotify, or Amazon Music, or many of the others. Thank you, and thanks to Podbean. So like I said in the beginning, Halo cars. Well, really, in the full beginning, I was talking about Halo the game. Now, this was a cool game. Great. It was fun. But the name behind it, when I even when I first heard it, I said, hey, that that's a term used in the automotive world to discuss a specific type of vehicle. One that doesn't sell in mass quantities, but one that is very important to the company it's attached to. Some Halo cars last for a long time. They'll stay there and become part of the company. And some of them are only there for a limited amount of time to bring more brand awareness and more consumers through the doors. But really, what is a Halo car? A Halo car is something similar to that of a Lexus LFA, a Ford GT, a Lotus Evesia, or even in some cases, the Corvette Stingray. These are Halo products. These are big mainstay vehicles that draw your attention to that company and that company only. When Lancia burst onto the scene in rally racing back in the 70s with the Stratos, this wedge-shaped compact sports car, people thought it was amazing. But this was just something built for rally racing. Lancia didn't want to build it for brand awareness or anything else. It was built for rally racing. But back in those days, it was similar to that of stock cars and the Dodge Daytona Superbird. You had to build a certain amount of them to actually be part of the racing series. So Lancia gave us the Stratos. Years down the road, this would become the Halo vehicle that would bring people to the Lancia brand for decades. Everybody remembers the Stratos and everybody remembers its wedge-shaped image. It was one of those vehicles that goes down in history that people remember and even to this day people still remember the name and the car company it's attached to lancia a company that only builds one vehicle to this day but still if you say the name people will think stratos if i say the name plymouth a lot of you will say cuda but in the 90s plymouth had one last hurrah before the curtain closed on them the prowler Yeah, it was actually destined to be the Halo car for the Plymouth brand to try and rejuvenate it and create an image for it. Unfortunately, it really didn't work. And with that, the PT Cruiser, which was originally the Pronto Cruiser, didn't wind up in the Plymouth name stable. It wound up going to Chrysler, similar to that of the Prowler in the final days. Prowler never lived up to its Halo car image. Why? Because it only came with a V6. No big, powerful V8 to make this a true muscle car. Prowler was underpowered, but the image it created is still memorable. Some Halo cars stick with companies for years. Hell, the NSX and the Corvette have been around for a long time. Similar to that of the R8. These are not big resale vehicles for these companies. They're not the ones that drive tons of customers through the doors. But they're ones that'll draw me to that company because I would love to own that. Enzo Ferrari knew this, and that's why he kept racing. He needed a Ferrari to keep racing to sell cars. And he needed to sell cars to keep racing. But Lexus didn't build the LFA to have a Halo car. They didn't need to be remembered. They didn't need to be seen. It was Lexus. They were a luxury brand. Sure, it helped create more brand awareness in Europe, but in North America, Lexus was still Lexus. They didn't need a Halo car. The LFA was built after Formula One went from V10 engines down to V8s. 
And Toyota built this V10 engine for the Formula 1 race car. What do you do with it? You stick it in a supercar. You create a halo car. Even though it was a bland and boring looking halo car. Because it really just looked like a giant coupe that went really fast. The LFA become the car for Lexus. And help catapult Lexus onto the world stage. Similar to that of how the Viper blew up. Dodge on the world stage. It helped Dodge enter the European market again because people wanted the Viper. Hell, Chevrolet, you can't find their vehicles on every country in the world, but a lot of those countries you can find Corvettes in because people want them. Those cars brought brand awareness. They put those companies on the map. The Ford GT, in its newest form, what is the reason behind it? Ford has the Mustang. They don't need a supercar to be added in. They have a muscle car. And they're only going to build a limited amount of the Ford GT, so what's the point? Well, a lot of people like the GT, and a lot of people became more aware of Ford. And even thought, hey, Ford builds this amazing product. They go fast. And then when you see these things racing, because a lot of Halo cars go racing it brings even more brand awareness essentially halo cars are a great marketing gimmick for every major car company out there and not every car company in the world actually has a halo car look at korea or hell even china there are no halo cars lotus got rid of the elan and kia brought bought it for their own little sports car but it never became a halo car it was just a cheap replacement sports car for the korean marketplace besides that hyundai and kia have never had a true performance car the genesis coupe wasn't even anywhere near being a halo car for hyundai so hyundai's never been put on the map but it's still one of the biggest automakers out there it doesn't need more brand awareness because everybody already knows about it a lot of these companies will try and do this to enter new markets. Maserati wanted to become a bigger name in the North American marketplace and even in the Chinese marketplace. So in the end, why doesn't Hyundai or Kia have these Halo vehicles? Why wouldn't they create them? Why wouldn't they say, hey, we need one? Maserati did it because they wanted to enter the Chinese marketplace and create a bigger name for themselves in the North American marketplace. So they created the MC20. They wanted to be known of. And they wanted to show the world that we have this amazing, powerful vehicle. We're Maserati. We were known as a sports car manufacturer back in the day. But even though we've only had the Gran Turismos, we still create amazing vehicles. We have the MC20. We are Maserati. And yet, the Halo came out. And like we said, limited numbers. They're not producing tons and tons of these things, but they are making them. And now more people know of Maserati. Tesla is one of these companies that actually understands a lot of the marketplace. People don't understand it, but Elon Musk and the Tesla marketing agents are really smart when it comes to the automotive world. Even being a company that only has four vehicles built off of two lines, Tesla knows how to make a name for itself. The Cybertruck is their cookie cutter vehicle. It'll be memorable. And any time in the future when you make a shape similar to that, you will automatically recognize it as a Cybertruck. Well, Tesla is also looking at creating a brand new Roadster. And this Roadster would be its new Halo car. It doesn't push to bring the Roadster out yet because they're still entering markets. They're doing well in all of the new markets that they're entering in. If they really wanted to enter these markets and they knew they were going to have trouble, the Halo car as the Roadster would appear. They could take their time on building their Halo car because people are still entering their dealerships. They still want to buy their products and they still go out of their way to buy those products. The name itself is known of around the world. Lotus wanted to bring itself back from the dead. With only the Evora and Elise, people had forgotten about Lotus. They forgot that Lotus actually competes with products from Lamborghini, Ferrari, and even McLaren. So Lotus created the Evesia, a brand new power source with a brand new supercar. The Evesia is their Halo product. It is the product that everybody wants. It is the product that people are going to get posters of, to put on their wall, and look at. This is the product that kids are going to dream about. Similar to that of me and the Ferrari F40 that was once graced my wall when I was a child. It was that Halo vehicle, that pride and joy that I wanted. And as I sit here talking to you about Halo vehicles, I'm looking up at the Dodge Viper. The original RT10 and GTS Coupe sitting above my desk. These are Halo products from Dodge. 
And throughout the 90s, Carol Shelby, Bob Lutz, and Lee Iacocca all helped expand Chrysler. And by utilizing the Viper early in the 90s, while they were trying to go through that massive expansion, moving from Dynasties to the Intrepids, from the Spirits to the Stratus, and the Shadows to the Neons, to reinvent themselves, they created this brand new Halo product that everybody wanted. The Viper was it. It was the Halo car for Dodge. People wanted it and people wanted to get into their division. Eventually, this Halo product became a main product running on three generations of vehicles. But in the end, it all came down to production value. Were they making enough money off this vehicle? And did they need a Halo product anymore? With the Challenger having tons of power and being that being their main focus for the Dodge brand, do they need the Viper? So the Halo car was lost. Ford, similar to that with the GT, even in its second and now third generation GTs, limited time, limited production, bring massive awareness just so people recognize us for a little while. And at the end of it, a new Mustang to grab your attention before we have to move on to the next thing. Hennessy built the Venom F5 because he wanted to bring bro more brand awareness to his products. He doesn't build cars, he customizes them, makes them faster, makes them better. But the F5 going after the fastest car in the world title made him a household name. How many people looked at Honda back in the early 80s and thought Honda, oh, they're Honda, they're, they're the main product that I'm going to go look at and I want. Not a ton of people. In the late 80s and early 90s, they worked with Ayrton Senna to make the original NSX. This was by no means supercar power, but it did have supercar performance and handling. It eventually squeezed its way into being a brand new Halo vehicle for both Honda and the new Acura brand in North America. This brought more awareness to both companies. The NSX has now returned and Acura is once again moving up the premium ranks to slowly taking out its counterparts from Lincoln, Infiniti, and even Chrysler. With only Buick to now take out, the NSX and its Halo status may be the one thing that separates your choice from a Buick to an Acura. But not every company creates Halo vehicles to be part of their product lineup. BMW did it with the old M8, and then they did it again with the i8. Limited time, limited production, similar to that of the Ford GT. Koenigsegg has done it with the Jesco. Lotus with the Avisia. They're brought out to bring more awareness. Some Halo cars are updated versions of standardized vehicles. Porsche 911 GT3. The 918 was a true Halo car in its form, but the GT3 gives Halo specs to the 911. Similar to that of how Ram and the TRX 1500 give a Halo truck status to the Ram brand. Everybody knew Ram built trucks. They have trucks and cargo vans, and that's what they have. But when they added in the 1500 TRX, they got a brand new Halo product. You may think, well, why isn't the Raptor a Halo product? Well, Ford has the GT. Ram is a division on its own. When it was part of Dodge, it would be a Halo product for the trucks, but not a Halo product for the entire division. Now that it's on its own division, the TRX is a Halo product. You're not going to see these things in mass quantities, but it's going to be the product you aspire to have. Halo vehicles are one of those things that are lost in Asian marketplaces. Not a lot of companies have had them. Nissan with the GTR is similar to a Halo product, but it's still riding on the cusp of it. A Supra, not really a Halo product, even though they're limited. It's more of an icon. The NSX was the closest thing to a Halo car. And now, Hongqi from China has created the S9, a brand new hypercar for the Chinese marketplace. One of the first production vehicle manufacturers in China to build a hypercar. Not just a dedicated hypercar company, this is a dedicated hypercar from a standardized product. Hongqi is essentially the Mercedes of China. They bend between Mercedes, and Maybach, and even Rolls Royce with their categories. And now with the S9, people are going to look at them and think, yeah. That's great. Bentley didn't give us the supercar that we all wanted back in the 90s, but Honky will. And with that, more people now understand that FAW is a big player. FAW's got deep pockets, and they want to go after the title of hypercar supremacy. Some of these Halo cars are built for speed. Some of them are built for marketing and advertising. Some of them are built for brand and awareness. Some of them are built just to gain a little bit of extra traction off of a great product to begin with. But they're all the vehicles in that brand that everybody wants. Yes, most people with a Ram, which vehicle they would love to have, money not an option, fuel not an option, they would say a TRX. 
Buy a Maserati, they want the MC20. Buying a Lamborghini Urus or Huracan, you want a Cyan or a Countach. Ferrari, you you don't want your Roma. You want the LaFerrari or an SF90 or an F40. A McLaren, you want the P1 or the Senna. You don't want the 720S. You want that top-of-the-line vehicle. The one that everyone sees. The one that everyone knows and the one that everyone wants. There's not enough of them in the world, which means these Halo cars will be ones that'll always be worth their price. Halo products aren't just there to make an extra buck. They're there for a reason, and that reason is to get you through the door. Because there's a lot of people in my town that went out to one specific Ford dealership because they had a GT in their lobby. They went out there to take a picture of it, or to see it, or to talk to them about it. And how many of those people also were looking for new vehicles, and now are looking at a Ford? That Halo car brought them into that dealership, and the salesman sold them on what they could afford. Halo cars are similar to that of a museum with an amazing exhibit. You go to see that exhibit, but you stay because of everything else. You go to Ferrari because you want that F40, but you wind up staying because you can only afford the Roma. It's what you're aspiring to get. It's the top of the line. It's the top of the food chain for that company. Some Halo cars are on top of that food chain, and it's easier to get to them than others. But in the end, all Halo cars will be remembered. So as long as you marketed it right, and as long as you got enough people interested in it, the halo will be riding on your head for a long time. So in the end, do car companies need halo vehicles? Yes. Think about it today. If Hyundai or Kia went bankrupt in 20 years, would you remember them? No. If Honda went bankrupt, would you remember them? Yeah, because you would remember the NSX. Those cars will live on forever. A Veloster N will not. Halo cars make your company live on. So Halo cars are something that every company needs at least one in their lifetime. So if you like this podcast, please like, share, or comment on any of the social feeds. Send this to your boss. Send this to your coworker. Send this to your friends, family, whoever. And tell them about Halo vehicles. Halo cars are amazing. And hell, we even have a Halo truck. They're the ones that get you in the door, even if you can't afford them. And after that, stop by the website. Check out autolooks.net. Go to the corporate website. Check out some of the ratings. Check out the Halo cars on our website. Go to the high performance tab and see what brand new vehicles are out there. See if you can distinguish what which ones are the halo products for those companies and which ones are just supercars hypercars high performance vehicles so from myself ever j and the whole auto looks team here strap yourself in for this one amazing ride our halo is taking us on